the poorest people in Zimbabwe are said to be in the rural areas. And what they mostly grow is the maize crop. But did you know that most of the land in the rural areas is lying idle? Maybe it's not good enough to be farmed on. Land is resource, and every resource is worth money, whether the land is arable or not. The Jews prove that fact. They can turn a desert into a farmland. This then means that every piece of land is a resource, and it is worth money. In the rural areas, if people would sit down and think what else can they do with the land that they have, even if the land is not arable, I'm telling you, they would or they will make so much money. That is a fact. And so the rural people or the people in the rural areas, there's so much land which they are not making use of. Some land they've condemned, but never condemn land. It is always something. Just find out how you can turn that land into money. Which is why Japan is so successful, even Israel. They make use of every resource. And they can transform resources that are condemned into monetary resources. The youth in Zimbabwe say they have no jobs. Why not 10 of you, 20 of you, and so on, raise up some money together? It can be 10 bucks, 20 bucks, $100. You can start by starting even a mere poultry project. And still on the issue of land in the rural areas, you can get, uh, let's say, if a geologist will visit these rural areas, they are going to find many resources underground, natural resources, minerals. But please don't drive out completely the rural folks when you find wealth under their land. It should also be their land. Rather, it should also be their wealth. So it means the rural people in Zimbabwe are not poor. They are some of the wealthiest. I was now talking about the youth in Zimbabwe. They say the sky is the limit. You can start a poultry project together. You can order fish maputi. Sorry, you can order fish maktemba wholesale and sell it. You can order even uh, cool drinks freeze it and sell it at also a price. And then you buy off each other because maybe there are 10 of you or there are 15 of you. Once you begin to make money, you give someone some money to start their own business and so on and so on. Or you can sell your skills. Look at the lawyer, the doctor, the architect. They are selling skill services. Maybe you've done computers. Just come up with a price list and begin to repay computers for companies. That's a business. So it means the youths are sitting on riches in Zimbabwe. They are skills. And Zimbabweans are some of the most skilled people in the world. This is good if you can't find a job. So Zimbabwe so poor but so rich. It's a question of transforming yourself from a poor estate to a rich estate. In Zimbabwe, innovation is a major missing link. Every time something which is innovative comes our way, people will say, ah, 
was as easy. The gap in uh, selling online in Zimbabwe is so worrying. So which means Zimbabwe is like a virgin territory. There are so many areas which are untapped. I gave example of the rural folk, how every piece of land is worth something, even the land which they're not farming, but they are sitting on it. The youths are sitting on ideas, on the means in which they can come together and do something about their lives. So when you say this country is poor, I don't believe you. I'm saying this country is rich. You must change your mindset. My name is Rubin uh, Mafukize. I'm a motivational speaker. To support my work, go to http times and seasons dot x o b o r dot com. http times and seasons dot x o b o r dot com. Or just go to the description part of this video. There you can also find the details if you want to hire me for your functions. Let us, you know, come out of this lie that uh, we, we are condemned, that you are useless. No, no. The Japanese, they the right. They make use of each and every resource in the country. That's why they're rich. Whereas in Zimbabwe, in Africa, is the opposite. So much land, so much resources untapped. As long as it's a resource, it is worth money. Bye for now.